Two explorers recently made history by crossing Antarctica alone without anyone to help. The trek has been attempted before but was never completed. In November, American adventure athlete Colin O'Brady and British Army officer Captain Lou Rudd each started the daunting journey separately. For more than 900 miles, they skied across the world's coldest and driest continent without a single day of rest. That's a step off the plane into Antarctica once more. A solo trek across the Antarctic was thought to be impossible. But on November 3rd, two men set out to make history. 49-year-old British Army Captain Lou Rudd and 33-year-old American Colin O'Brady. That's Colin. Dropped at the start point. Load his gear. A plane dropped them about a mile apart on the ice shelf. The goal was to make the more than 900-mile trek alone across Antarctica using just cross-country skis while pulling a heavy sled of supplies. Really bad wind and then oh, just deep snow. And they battled against elements like wind gusts up to 60 miles per hour, freezing temperatures that dipped below negative 40 degrees, and whiteout conditions, conditions they had trained for during the months prior. Previous attempts across Antarctica were not successful. British explorer Henry Worsley died shortly after trying to complete the trek in 2016. On the final leg of his journey, O'Brady skied the roughly 80 remaining miles in just over 32 hours. He finished in 54 days on December 26. When Rudd crossed the finish line just two days later, O'Brady was there to celebrate the incredible feat they had accomplished. Lou Rudd is also the only person to have crossed Antarctica twice, once with a group and once solo. He joins us only on CBS This Morning. Welcome. Congratulations. Congratulations. Oh, Amazing. Thank you very much. <laughs> so this all took place right before your 50th birthday. What a way to celebrate that milestone. What did it feel like when you finally made it? Yeah, I mean, absolutely uh, elated. You know, I was, uh, I was really conscious when I set off on the expedition that nobody had managed to, to do this before. So, you know, success was by no means guaranteed and to... To finally make it after 56 days, you know, uh, onto the Ross Ice Shelf at the finish point was just uh, an amazing feeling and huge relief that I'd, uh, I'd managed to do it. Yeah, no means it. guaranteed. I mean, somebody <laughs> already passed away trying to attempt just that. 20 days into the trek, you made a mistake that put you in danger. Why didn't you end it there? Yeah, so um, I got into an area of really deep, soft snow. It was, uh, it was a very difficult season uh, this year down in Antarctica uh, with the amount of snowfall and soft snow. and. Uh, and one morning, it had been snowing all night, I got up and I could barely move the polk, you know, which weighed about 130 kilograms. What's um, a polk? Uh, it's a sledge. A sled. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's what you're dragging behind you. It's got, you know, it's basically your life pod. It's got mm -hmm. everything in there you need to survive for the two months, all my food and tents and equipment. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I could barely move it because of the deep, soft snow. So I, I took half of the stuff out, mm. uh, my tent and sleeping bag, and sort of put it on the surface and marked it with a ski. And then I went forward a few miles with, uh, with all the food, dropped that off, and in the meantime, uh, the weather really deteriorated and the visibility went down to about five meters, uh, 50 mile an hour wind. And I was trying to follow back along my ski tracks to recover my tent and sleeping bag. And you know, it was quite difficult. I managed to locate it in the end, but it took me a while. And I was conscious that if I didn't find that gear, that instantly I was in a, a life threatening sort of wow. situation. There's a, there's but to be honest, question though, finish that. Yeah. She said, why didn't you end it then? There were many times I bet you thought, I can't make it, I can't do it. Yeah, I mean, you know, really keen. Obviously, um, we talked about uh, Henry Worsley, you know, sadly the, the Britain that died three years ago, attempted his journey. Um, so Henry was a friend of mine. Um, I skied to the South Pole with Henry in 2011 and shared a tent with him. So. You know, I was really keen that I was, you know, sort of was safe and successful. I was, I was fundraising for some great charities, um, great causes, and then just the amount of support and people I knew that were backing me, I just didn't want to let everyone down. I think there's a lesson for so many of us to learn from you because you said every time you felt like stopping, you did what? Yes, yeah, so uh, the 11 steps. You take 11 uh, yeah, steps. Tell yeah. us about that. So um, I, I heard you know, years ago, some, somebody told me, you know, that somebody calculated with uh, Captain Scott, you know, uh, obviously when he reached the South Pole, um, that on the way back they were trying to reach a, um, a depot of food and equipment, you know, and had they reached that, they would have survived. Um, somebody calculated that if the, uh, the Scott team, if every day they'd taken a, an extra mm. 11 steps, they probably would have, you know, made it back to, mm. to one ton depot and survived wow. the journey. And after hearing that, and whenever I'm on a polar journey now, I'll sort of finish skiing for the day and 
you know, and will it be eight o'clock? And then I'll always take 11, 11 more steps. <laughs> and then, and then I'll put my so tent up. Like, yeah. It yeah. makes me think about 11 just, steps. Yeah. I know, it really yeah. Let's, let's take that yeah. little extra step. It's that like, it's like a superstition. Now, once I started doing it, I can't stop doing it. I have to, like, yeah. every day. It, let's it, talk it. about Bruce Springsteen. Yes. Who got yeah. you through, and Bono, listening to their music. <laughs> I want to know yeah. what songs you were listening to and what books you said. Just listening to another voice was helpful to you. Yeah, so obviously being on my own, you know. What was a Bruce song? What was a Bono song? You know, so Born in the USA. <laughs> Actually, was uh, <laughs> I know, I know, was was, was uh, yeah, really just sort of perked me up, you know. And Bono's, you know, um, I think it's so uh, mysterious, you know. Mysterious. The, yeah, and you were reading, well. listening to books on tape. Yeah, so I had like, a lot of audio books, which I found really comforting to have, like you know, a sort of human voice, yeah. you know, on my headphones talking to me as I was skiing along because the wind would be howling and it's, it's quite lonely. And so, what kind you, of books though? Uh, Winston Churchill. Oh, a lot, a lot sure. of yeah, a lot yeah, of biographies yes. of Winston. We will fight Churchill. on the beaches, you know. Yeah, just keep going. Yeah. Lot, you know, one of them was just recycling writing a lot of sort of Churchill's famous speeches, yeah. so it's really sort of motivational stuff, you know. And Lou, and Lou said he, he yeah. ate 6,000 calories a day, wow. but yeah. burning 10,000 calories. But burning about 10,000, yeah. You dropped half that food after 20 days. Yeah. And I'm wow. afraid our journey here is ended. Lou, you're an inspiration <laughs> yes. So thank you very much. I'm taking yeah. my yeah. extra steps today. Yeah. That's right, 11 at least. Let's do 12, Nora. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 12. <laughs>